Daniel 2 verses 24 to 30. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will shew unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah, that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, shew unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, what should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breasts and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. As we can see in verse 28, the secrets of the dream that will be revealed are in reference to the latter days. The study of end times prophecy is called eschatology, which comes from the Greek word eschatos, meaning last. There are various interpretations of end times prophecy within Christianity, as we will explain further in this study but we should not shy away from such a topic as this, as this is still a huge part of our faith. The King James Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, to study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Prophecy makes up close to a quarter of the scriptures. Therefore, it is not a topic that we should ignore or place as insignificant, and should proceed with the uttermost caution. This vision given by God to both Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel is a prophetic outline of what is known as the times of the Gentiles. Each separation of the statue is to represent a kingdom in its own time eventually culminating in their downfalls and the rise of one final and glorious kingdom, which we will be examining in the following verses. Daniel's prophecy is still felt to this day, and was recalled in Jesus' prophecy in the temple in Luke 21 verse 24 concerning the Jewish people and their exile from Israel. Luke 21 verse 24 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, 
and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. <laughs>